Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith, and today we're going to be unboxing a game called Thunderstone Quest. And this game was created by Mike Elliott, and AEG is the publisher. It's a deck building game of fantasy adventure, and it is a massive box. This thing is huge, and it may not be doing justice on screen right now, showing its depth. But as soon as I start unboxing it and moving this thing, you'll be able to see the depth at which this uh, game really is. Uh, my hand right now going alongside of it almost goes up to above my wrist level in height, which is extremely large box. Uh, rivals a box probably close to it like, well, I guess Fireteam Zero is a box of decent size as well, and this is definitely in that same category. Although this game is made up of a ton of cards as it's a deck building game. The reason I'm showing this on the channel is because this came as a re recent fulfillment of the Kickstarter. Um, now the cool thing about this is that Thunderstone Quest, and I've been waiting a while to do this unboxing actually, for the main reason that I wanted to be sure the solo mode would actually be implemented with this one. So I'm excited to announce, and uh, it's not just me announcing it, it's been out there for quite some time now, but it did take me some time to actually get to this unboxing, that there is going to be a solo mode made for Thunderstone Quest which is going to come as part of the reprint for Thunderstone Quest later this year. So that's really exciting and you can check out to find the exact date and if I'm able to do so I'll put that in the description below but I'm sure a number of you have already heard the news and are likely extremely excited. Uh, I'm really really happy to hear a game of this magnitude getting a solo uh, option for it and the cool thing is it won't be just tagged on as a stretch goal as part of their next Kickstarter is literally being implemented solo and co-op for Thunderstone Quest and that's what's really cool it'll become an official part of the game so what you're seeing here is going to be an unboxing of what is basically currently released to date although again when the new Kickstarter comes in the future this could expand uh, because that's all about what this deck building game is all about is expansions and different add-ons so I wouldn't be surprised if the new Kickstarter does just that that's basically the only overview I really want to give of Thunderstone Quest. So without further ado, let's go ahead and crack into this monster of a box. So first we're going to do, and I can tell you right now, this thing is heavy. Uh, I'm going to try to lift this on its side so you guys can see the uh, depth of this thing. Um, you can see right here, it's huge. It's a massive box, extremely thick. And as I mentioned before, it's bigger than my hand in height, at least. It goes up almost a little bit of my wrist there. Um, it's big. It's a big box, and it weighs a lot because it's comprised of mainly cards, obviously. So um, it's not a light one, and it's going to take up some decent shelf space if you have it available. It is a beast. It has some incredible artwork along the top sections, or I should say side sections of the box, all the way around. Um, it has a really nice back that shows quite a bit about the, uh, the cards itself. So I'll flip that around so you guys can see it. And just like that, this is kind of what it looks like at least in terms of some of the uh, box contents, some of the cards and things like that. You got some fantastic artwork. Again, one of the things that drew me to this game was how great it really looked, but also how much of a massive improvement uh, this Thunderstone quest is over uh, Thunderstone, which was a prior older entry into, uh, into the series, I guess, or the lore and background of this particular game. So we're going to go ahead and crack into it now. I know we're about three minutes or so into the video, so I do apologize for that. But there's quite a bit going on with this one. The excitement really is mounting for that new Kickstarter. So we're going to go ahead and crack this in. And anyone actually in the comments that wants to go ahead and just um, mention the exact date that it's going, or at least the month, that would be fantastic. And uh, I'll go ahead and I'll pin it so that everyone's aware. Um, so the first one that's able to do that, I'll, I'll just pin that comment and then everyone will be aware. But this is going to be really... It's going to be a beast. I don't... This could be a long unboxing. I don't really know. It, based on the size of this box, it could take a bit to get through this stuff. But uh, at least this will give you a good idea as to what you could expect if you want to back it in the coming reprint. So, and whether this is kind of a game for you or not, it's a... It's a beast. But I do love deck builders. They are... They're just so much fun. And uh, I really can't wait to dive into this one. So, but again, another thing just to let you guys know about too is, of course, I won't be doing any showcases on this particular one until the solo has been released for it, uh, because I'm not going to show you the the multiplayer version or, or play this with other players, because the channel focuses uh, specifically on solo play, which is another reason I held off on doing this unboxing until now, is because I wanted to ensure that the solo and co-op mode was coming for sure. So, and we're well past that confirmation. All right, here we go. There's the beast, and there it is without any shrink on it. Again, artwork-wise, looks awesome. Definitely pops off the shelf. Uh, people will see it when they walk into your room. 
Uh, it definitely has, um, well, the artwork's really cool all around. I'm really happy with it, at least what it looks like on the box. So let's see how it looks on the inside. And just give me a minute here as I struggle to try to get this thing open. I'm going to probably have to go at it a couple times from either side and wiggle it free, and then we'll get it opened up. There we go. Okay. Wow, what a beast, what an absolute beast. This is almost rivaling in size and uh, it's definitely, well, I guess Gloomhaven's box is definitely as, uh, it's definitely taller than Gloomhaven's box, but I don't think as wide. So, but it, it's it's in that same realm. It's pretty, it's pretty intense. There's a lot going on here. So first off, you're gonna see a rule book. So of course, uh, a wonderful rule book. Uh, let's see how wonderful it really is when I actually open it up. But uh, it looks nice, as, it, as the cover does on the front. So let's go ahead and open the first page. So I can tell you right now, this is a huge rule book in terms of its size. So print size-wise, you're not gonna have any issues seeing the text <laughs> in the rule book. Um, and right off the bat here, you've got your uh, objective. It's even talking about unpacking the box and kind of how you should go about it and what things you should be pulling out. Likely to set up for your first uh, game and your setting up of your player area, all that kind of stuff. You got the setting up of the village and the dungeon. The coolest thing about this deck builder is it implements a whole, uh, you know, city like town kind of situation going on where you got like side quests and guilds and marketplaces and temples and arcane wonders and all this stuff, as well as, of course, the dungeon itself you're going through. But uh, I really feel like this is going to be, and I mentioned this during my top 10 solo card games, that this was going to be something special when the solo rules get added into it. Because right now it's really uh, attractive to those people that are not playing it solo. But I think this is going to bring in a whole other wave of support as soon as they release that. And I cannot wait. Um, I really think it's a cool... Uh, deck building games typically are comprised of mainly cards, which this one definitely is. But it also has a game board and it also has tokens and there's, and there's a lot of... Um, I don't know how else to say. It's got a dungeon crawler vibe to it, but without all the miniatures, I guess, is the best way. You're still leveling up, you're, you know, you're deck building and things like that, but there's, you're not, it's not filled with minis. It's filled with cards. And uh, I don't know, I guess I'm a sucker for card games, and this is just one I've always had my eye on uh, since way back when this first Kickstarter came, and I'm really excited for it. So uh, this is a quick glimpse of the rule book, as you're seeing here. You won't be able to see anything specifically, but... I'm just gonna kind of turn the pages a couple times so you guys can get a gist idea of kind of how they laid things out. Looks like they did a good job in terms of giving enough pictures and explanations. Um, they also show like how you move throughout the dungeon, all that kind of stuff. It's just, it looks really cool. And I just, I can't, I'm, I'm actually gonna have to debate whether or not I've got to sleeve this or not. That's gonna be the nightmare I've got to come up with in my head. Cause uh, if I have to sleeve, or if I decide to sleeve this, I'm gonna be going in big time. Uh, this is 23 pages long. It looks like at the very back of the rule book, it has your campaign log. So I'll give that a little closer. So you can kind of see you got your winner, your score, your games. So you can just keep track of you know how you're doing. Of course, that'll probably change with the solo mode in terms of what you're tracking. Iconography reference guide on the back, which is always handy for tokens and all the different things you're gonna see on your cards. So that's handy, but that's the rule book. You're also going to notice when you're unboxing this thing, you've got these little straps, which is very unique. And I have not seen this in any game I've purchased. There might be other, be other ones out there that you guys are familiar with that do this. But this, for me, is the first time I've ever seen it. For a game that has a box this deep, it makes perfect sense. And it's really cool. I'll show you guys how this actually works out in a second. I may need, even need to do this now because uh, I don't know how this actually separates out. But for now, I'm going to just continue going through uh, layer by layer. I'll leave the handles the way they are. Actually, let's just take a pull and see. Yeah, so basically it's going to separate this top section full of manuals, likely token boards, and maybe game boards, probably away from the cards, which are underneath. There you go. And of course, the, because the box is so massive and they're so smart, they left enough room for all these expansions to go into. So when future content comes out for the game, you have space to put it in. And it's just as easy as that as lifting this up in order to get down into the bottom of the box. So underneath here, we've got the quest book. And this thing is thick. That is a thick, thick book. And uh, just as, actually this is gonna be, this is probably gonna be 50 pages at least. That is a monster of a book. Okay, so let me let me just kind of flip through this a little bit of time. First off, the artwork on it pops, like you can see it a mile away. I love the colors. Uh, everything about it looks just super cool. <laughs> These guys have 
seen better days. And it is, yes, called the Quest Book, as I mentioned. Flipping over the first page, you've got your welcome, your contents, welcome to Thunderstone Quest. Uh, you've got your treasures, you've got your how to use the book, and of course, more of like a setup, I guess. I don't think this is a setup, but more so uh, maybe how you lay out your first adventure, would be my guess. Uh, chapter one, A Mirror in the Dark. So there's your first one. Every chapter seems to have a little bit of artwork with it, which is cool. Uh, chapter one, A Mirror in the Dark, and this is the quest card list in terms of, I'm guessing these are the quest cards you have to go after and maybe to build those particular decks. I'll be learning a lot about that in the future. Uh, you've got yourself a bunch of quest or flavor text, I guess, for these particular quests, which is awesome. And then it says rumblings from the past, adventure card list for heroes, items, spells over here, weapons, monsters, um, guardians. I'll give you guys a little bit of a closer look up on some of these cards. Of course, we'll see them when we go through the cards themselves, but just really cool. Artwork style-wise, love it. It looks really interesting. And then room tiles here. So this game, even, the, even though it's a deck builder, has... Uh, these really cool room tiles that are, again, they just add to the presence of the game. Um, when I, when I want to compare it to something, I think it's something like Dragonfire, where there's not as many, um, you know, there's not as much presence in terms of where you're, you are in the game when you're playing Dragonfire, but I really enjoy, enjoy that game as well. Uh, but this, I just think, adds another layer when you can, you can actually visually see oh, I'm in the mine right now, or, and things like that. It just helps you to get more immersed in the story, or the character, or the certain events that are happening, and I think that's really cool that they went to that to that level. Of course, as I continue to go this, this is the same quest, and there's just more and more and more. Again, I'm not sure how this actually works out, but at a certain point, you'll go past the first one and go into the next chapter, and, and so on. So this thing is just littered with a whole bunch of content. So you got chapter two, uh, chapter two right there. This one will likely come up with chapter three. You've got chapter four at the foundations of the world. And we've got ripples in time, the epilogue. So maybe the epilogue, oh uh, yeah, I, there's so much stuff to go through in this. So much stuff, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be great to read that and try to figure out what the heck is going on. So first up we got here is the game board. So this is exciting. So we might need to actually make some space here. So I'm gonna have to shuffle some things around. So just bear with me as I make a little bit more space because I'll see if I can actually fit this board in the current area that we're unboxing this, but we'll see how that pans out. Okay, and now you can see the game board fully pulled out, and you can notice right off the bat that we've got different sections of the game board, so the marketplace kind of runs along the left-hand side, it's got weapons and spells back and forth, as well as some any spots, we've got items down here in the bottom left, the temple is right here, shop of arcane wonders where there's some treasures, uh, we've got monster decks uh, scaling up from one, two, three, which I assume would be different levels, You've got uh, on the far right here, uh, dungeon rooms, dungeon rooms, dungeon rooms again, corresponding to each of the different levels of the dungeon, and the wilderness way up top. Uh, the bazir up here at the very top with, uh, you've got different icons, which I'm not 100% familiar with right off the top, but it kind of looks like potions, food, and I don't know what that might be, exploration. Uh, we'll have to find out what that is exactly. Guild quarters is sitting in the center here, and you've got your cleric, fighter, rogue, wizard, and I'm guessing that this is where you're leveling up your characters. These are places you can visit as you're going through, or you're gonna be using as you go through the campaigns. I think that's really cool. Now, just to show you the back side of this board, because it is double-sided, on the back side of the board, what they've done is they've actually just simply, if I'm not mistaken, they've simply removed any uh, terminology from the spaces, I think it's just blank. So, uh, for instance, you'll notice there's no words in the center here. Uh, I don't know for sure if there's any actual difference in the content. I'm just looking to double check. No, that looks exactly the same. Now, if I flip to this side, we'll probably see, yeah, see so you're seeing no words or terminology inside of any of these different uh, spots. All right, next up is going to be what I understand as the player boards. So the player boards look like this. So you've got kind of a player deck, you've got yourself a discard pile. Again, those icons that I haven't 100% figured what they are will be kind of kept in this little box area here. I'm not sure what this is either. It could be a rune of some type. I'm not 100% sure. Gems. You got your hit point track across here. So you have zero HP if you're down in this spot. And uh, it looks like you've got, you're tracking your wounds as well with the hit points, of course. On the left of the board, it says you've got uh, guild sponsorship. You've got side quests that you've been dealing with. 
And then of course you've got a village and dungeon. This is gonna kind of tell you, my assumption is kind of how to handle these two different environments. So that's a nice reference tool uh, for the players. And there's actually four of these boards. And if I flip this over, there's nothing special on the back. So they're simply just meant to be, to be sitting in front of each player. Now, if you're playing solo, you'll only end up having one in the future, unless of course they're implementing new a new board of some type that may or may not be coming with the new Kickstarter that uh, maybe helps out with solo play. So. That's that. Moving on to the next thing inside this tray. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift that fancy tray out so you guys can see that in action. But inside of this, once you get past the rule books and everything else, you're gonna get into the kind of the core of the top layer of the box. At, the, at this point, you're getting into minis, tokens, as well as those really cool tiles I was talking about. So let's first off take a look at the minis because there's really not that many in this game. But the cool thing is they've made a mini for every major character, which is awesome. So you're not only playing uh, a deck building game, which is mainly focused in deck building and cards, but you're also getting at least a miniature to represent you. And that makes it, I don't know, I guess that just pulls you more into it. It's nice to always have a, a miniature representation of yourself in a game. Plus you'll be using it on the actual game board so there is a reason to have it. So right here we've got one of the characters and again I'm not familiar with any so all I'm going to do is just kind of show you uh, how they look and I can tell you right now just from a quick glance pretty happy with them they're they're pretty detailed so if anyone wanted to actually spend the time to paint a particular one it could be well worth your time to do so and really uh, get into whichever character you think is the coolest or you're more into so there's another character there that's pretty awesome. Uh, we've got four other ones. I'll go through each one because I think it's worth it. There's not tons of miniatures in the game, so it might be worth it to just take a look at each individual miniature. So there's another one there. That guy's pretty cool. He's got a big old ax. Again, details are really good. Like, I used to paint miniatures quite a bit prior to starting the channel, and uh, you know, if I had a have, if I had the more more free time, I guess is the best way to say it, um, and things like that, I would be painting things like this because there's only like five or six of them. It wouldn't take that long. Uh, you could dry brush it. You could do a number of things to really do it quickly if you wanted to. But if you really wanted to get into the details, you could spend some serious time making them look really good. And uh, it would be really cool to be playing a deck builder and have a painted up miniature that you're also playing. That would be awesome. Um, but for now, unpainted looks like the way to go for me, at least until more time is open for me. And uh, there's another individual. So it's kind of hard to tell you what these, uh, what each of these are just yet, but I'm sure once we go through cards and stuff, that stuff will kind of be revealed. We'll know what their names are, we'll know what, the, what type of creature they are, and things like that. So here's the last one, and uh, quite small, could be a gnome, not 100% sure, but... Uh, Pretty cool, very cool. So those are all the miniatures for Thunderstone Quest, at least in this particular box. Next up, we'll talk about, wow, look at these dice. Now these are cool dice, I didn't expect that. I was expecting uh, regular D6s or something like that. These are cool, um, wow, those are nice. Uh, obviously you're gonna be able to see the die rolls from a mile away, so that's one thing that I'm already loving about this. Um, that those are some fantastic looking dice and normally you don't see dice that have a number that big on them But that's that definitely has some theme behind it I think even from the distance you guys are you can pretty much make out with ease what I'm rolling here So it's just as uh, obvious for me as well uh, Now I don't think I've ever rolled dice and not been able to see what I rolled um, and things like that or struggled to see it But it definitely is kind of cool to have these big massive uh, uh, numbers on them and just to let you know as well these are oversized dice these are not normal sized dice I don't have one to um, you know put it up against some another die but I'd say it's at least double the size of your average d6 at least if not two and a half times the size they're big um, so that's really cool like that I'm glad they went the extra step on that one and it also has a nice marble kind of look to it as well if you're if you guys are picking up on that so that's also pretty interesting so definitely quality in the dice department for sure. We've got a whole bunch of bagged uh, wooden tokens. So this is kind of actually, I've been, I've been looking around in the scythe box recently and been playing and setting up for a showcase of that as well, guys. So wanted to let you know that that is coming as well. And this one uh, reminds me, this is kind of reminding me of some of what the scythe tokens look like at least the ones in the regular game box. So you've got, and again, I'm not gonna know which ones are which here. Could This could be coal of some type, I don't even know. Uh, but we'll find out soon when we go through the rules. But 
Again, wooden tokens are awesome, and uh, it just gives a nice, uh, some nice character. Now this one has to be food because that is most definitely bread. So you got some wooden tokens there uh, that are bread. These ones here look like it could be milk of some type or a potion uh, or some type of drink just in general. Uh, this one here, these ones are black. So these are black versions of the same, and they're probably hard to see on camera, but they're black versions of the same gray ones here. So there's less of them. Maybe they're a higher quality or quant like, I'm not sure. It's a resource that likely has different tiers of value. Maybe this is my guess. Uh, this one right here, uh, again, not sure. They look like people to me. So that could represent individuals we're running into, monsters, I'm not sure. So. We'll find out, but uh, those are all the wooden components within the game. Those are pretty cool, so we'll put those all back. I love this insert, by the way. I, I cannot get over how cool they made that with the handle straps. That's perfect. There's a little bit of extra space in this, so they included this just to kind of buffer it. And underneath here, you've got a pile of these different places. Now, this is what really grabs me, or at least grabbed me when I was looking at the Kickstarter, in terms of the theme and pulling you into what you're doing. Uh, this is awesome. So you've got like a crypt location here. You've got yourself a vault location. You've got yourself the fairy meadow. These are awesome. Like the artwork is just so cool. Um, Treehouse. Oh, elven runes. That's cool. Ominous looking road. Yes, yes indeed. Hollow tree. Elven outpost. Alchemy Chamber, The Bog. I like this. This is the kind of thing that really draws, would draw me into a deck builder. It's not, it's a very sim a simple ad, really. I mean, there are a bunch of tiles, but just having the feeling that you're in a location or this is what the location looks like pulls me in automatically. There's a lot of deck builders that don't do that well, or they're doing it on a really small card with tiny art that takes up about this much space. And it doesn't have the presence, and this really, really does have the presence behind it. Um, it's really cool. Fire Chasm, uh, Dangerous Passageway. Yep, that pretty much looks pretty terrifying. The Gate Cavern, and then we're back to the Crypt. So that's the first pile here. Now, of course, these could be layered in different levels. There's uh, probably a difficulty thing up here. That's I'm seeing leveling. Uh, no, I'm noticing that it matches up with some of the monster deck stuff. So level one, two, three. So some of these are level two, some are one, some are three. I'm sure the gameplay will, or sorry, the rules will describe kind of uh, how and when those are played and in what order. Here's some more. We got the, uh, the mine. Looks like a one, three is the throne room. One is the abandoned gate. And you'll notice some of these have some text on them, some of them don't. So the second this one doesn't. But then every once in a while you get one that has some text on it, maybe something special. Uh, the servant's tombs, uh, the sunken graveyard, the blood altar room, the water temple, the fire temple. Wow, the celestial temple. That's cool, all these different types of temples. Air temple, earth temple, wow. That's cool, I like that. So there's a whole bunch of temples, kind of, that almost gave me a little bit of a Zelda vibe there with the, with the, all the different uh, elemental temples showing up. And then this is a bigger, this is a bigger one. It's called the Wilderness. So maybe this is the one that sits up in this area up here. I don't know how to orientate this so it sits correctly. I think it's like this, because the text is, is facing down like that. So I'm not too sure. This says uh, monsters in this dungeon room may never be removed. And then up here, it says if you feed a guardian, you gain, looks like some type of resource per guardian key. Cool. All right. Well, you got a tile to represent the whole wilderness. So again, this normally sits in the bottom, but I'm just going to put this back and lay it across the top and then shuffle everything down. We'll put that piece back in that we got just to fill that in. And then there we go. That's the whole top section of the king or the, the King, the Thunderstone Quest box. Now we're gonna get into the actual cards, which is kind of where things get exciting because that's what this is all about, the deck builder. So um, it's all about the cards, typically. So we're gonna go back to the main box, which is still even hollowed out to this point with uh, you know some empty uh, inserts in the middle here for expansions later on. It still weighs a ton. Like that is, that's because these are completely full all the way across, if I'm not mistaken. We'll have to take a look and see. 
Um, and then they've got some empty ones in the middle here for expansions later on. So you can see you can just, if you want a tray, you can literally just pull it out, which is super handy when you're playing the game to be able to, to break them out in that way. Okay, so what should we pull out first? I guess probably we should just remove one of these to make life easy for ourselves. Let's go with the one on the very bottom. Oh my goodness, there's so much stuff here. So I'm just going to push this all the way back, and there we go. So you have a Thunderstone um, plastic insert that basically <clears throat> rests on top of everything to keep it all in place. And there you go, your whole row of cards and a ton of decks of cards as well. So we'll put that to the side. Um, trying to figure out the order to open these up in is going to be fun because I'm not sure which end to start from, top or bottom. So bear with me here. I may have to just do a quick little look through. So at the beginning of some of these decks, you're going to see what ties into the different chapters. So at the Foundations of the World has a three on the front of this one. Now, I don't know whether or not uh, they will all be in order or not, but there we go. This one is a two. So it looks like if we go in that direction, if this is the three, this is the two, this should be the one. Yes, that is the one. And then from this point, we're going into Rise from the Mire. And this goes all the way down to the end. All the way to the end. So I think there's th there might be three chapters just in this one alone. Yeah, looks like there's three chapters across the bottom. Then we've got all these little card packs in the side here. Uh, these are interesting. So these are going to be, and they, all, they honestly, these ones are bigger, sorry, than the, the cards that are standard size in here. These are a little longer. And they look like they're weapons of some type, um, I think. So we've got like two-handed sword, the staff, a holy mace, uh, black rock bandits, and these are like packs. Now, if I'm not mistaken, these could be Kickstarter exclusive. These could be additions that were added in through the Kickstarter. I'm not 100% sure on that. But again, remember when the new print comes for the Kickstarter, um, these are the types of things that you may be able to pick up um, at that time. I don't believe they're making it anything exclusive that you won't be able to find again. Um, <clears throat> what I might do is just crack a couple of these open. I'm not going to open up the scenario specific ones because, well, first off, I don't want to spoil anything because it's, it's a chapter. You're playing through like a campaign. But if uh, these ones shouldn't be too bad because they should just be, uh, well, I don't know what they are 100%, but uh, actually I have no idea. Uh, these could just be items. Yeah, they look like a mix of items and characters. So I'll just give you an idea of some of the artwork and stuff. But there is stuff on the back here. So it has gameplay value. It's not just for looks. Again, I just don't know how it actually works yet, but I will be doing everything I can to dive into this and figure it out. The artwork is is off the charts. It's so cool looking. Like every single one of these is great. I love it. It's got a little bit of a cartoonish kind of vibe to it though, if you guys are picking up on that. But then some of the I, I think, I feel like some of the characters and some of the weapons are more cartoony, but then the actual locations looked a lot more serious. That's kind of the vibe I was picking up uh, when I was going through the first little bit here. Uh, I don't know if I'll go through all three of these just yet. Maybe what I'll do is I'll check to see what's in this top section here to see how it's different from the other one. So I'm going to take this cover off, and now we've got another whole row of packs of cards way up here. We've got some more cards that are tucked into the corner, so... Again, probably likely more things and weapons and things like that to fulfill, or not fulfill, but to add to our characters. <clears throat> these should be, these should be encounters. I guess we'll find out real quick. So we got, uh, ah, basic cards. So now we're getting to stuff where the game probably likely gets set up with. So you've got, yeah, like, these are the types of things you'd probably, I would need to open up probably to start the campaign first. And inside the manual, from what I read prior to receiving this, there are certain packs that they instruct you to open, and in most cases they tell you don't just, I mean, you can do whatever you want. If you want to unpackage everything here and try to organize it, that's okay too. But some, from what I've been hearing, sometimes it's easier because of the fact they label the top of every deck. You can actually open them as you need them or as you encounter them versus just opening everything up and, and have a mass of cards that are really, really confusing to potentially put in order. So. Uh, you know, take a look at the rule book because it will specify what you should be opening and what you shouldn't be opening. And then, of course, right here, you can see a mirror in the dark. Now, I think that was the first chapter. I thought it was here, but I think this is it. So, you know, I'll probably be opening the first few packs here and then be going on from there. 
This is crazy. There's a lot, a lot of stuff here. Now, on top of all these cards and the, and the fact that I can't open up every single one of them in this in this unboxing to show you everything, I can go ahead and maybe open up one of these uh, basic card sets because I know for a fact that we're going to need to. And I would like to show you something about what the actual Thunderstone Quest cards look like, the standard ones. So let's do that really quick, just to get a good idea as to what they look like. Now, what will end up happening here is I'm gonna I'm gonna have quite the journey, as I mentioned earlier on, as to whether or not I sleeve these. That's an argument that I that I'm gonna have in my head because deck builders typically take a lot of shuffling abuse. Not technically everything in the game, but they can. So I'm gonna have to have some. I have to think about that. Uh, so here's our basic card deck, or one of them anyway, the first one. So you've got uh, Arcane Studies. Of course, the backs are all the same, I think. Oh, no, they're not, actually. So if I flip this over, some of them are labeled as generic. And then you've got ones that are oh specific to guilds, like uh, all kinds of guilds you can join. There's red back cards in here. Uh, brown ones, which are side quests. So this one actually looks to have quite a few basic cards that are across the board. So um, these ones, I think, are... These are the side quests. So... This is what a side quest would look like. And the player boards, as we went over earlier, have spots for these side quests. So I imagine you're doing them and you're completing them, that type of thing. You're storing them there. You've got keys that you're supposed to get. I remember that being mentioned earlier in the unboxing. I think one of these things here, I think it was... I don't know where it was. Somewhere in here we were looking through and it's something about mentioned about having a key. So here's a whole bunch of different colored keys. Um, got some other cards. These ones are healer's orders there. Not sure what these are, actually. What they look like. Oh, I lost that one on the floor. And got a bunch of those. And then we get into, okay, so an adventure. So this might be player specific cards now, uh, my guess. Uh, so one of them is called an adventure. You got a bunch of those. And they seem to be all basic. So they're all exactly the same. Because a deck builder typically is like that. There's usually quite a bit of the same card going throughout it. Um, so let's go ahead and crack one more pack just to get another little glimpse of some of the other things going on in here. Again, I'm not gonna unbox everything here. In some games I would. I would typically open everything and show you guys all, but uh, I think some of it's spoiler territory, with, especially with the chapter, so I don't wanna go there. Uh, but at the same time, I just wanna give you a good idea as to what it looks like and the quality of stuff here. So hopefully this is helping you guys out. So basic cards, again, this is gonna continue on from where we left off in the last one. And then it's going to start introducing some different cards, like this one here is a dagger, and it's a starter weapon, so you can tell these are cards that start you off, and uh, they do have the blue back. It's a bunch of daggers. We've got uh, lanterns, which are also starting cards. Got uh, thunderstone shards. Ah, so maybe those, those tokens are shards, if that's what it was that I was uh, trying to figure out, those wooden tokens. Um, very cool though, the artwork is, as you can see, very, very good. <laughs> it's uh, it's like picturesque, it's pretty cool. Really like it. Guardsmen. So now we're getting into some different and unique cards. This is pretty cool. Boots, Rod, Hero's Ring, Spray, Protection from Wounds, Flying Dead. Yeah, you know what, at the end of the day, I think, I think this is gonna be one of those games I'm gonna have to sleeve. It's probably gonna have to happen. Because these are going to probably take a beating as I play through them, and uh, I'm not going to want that. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, well, uh, maybe I'll open up the one last basic card deck. So that we've covered all the basic cards, and you've seen all those. And then what we're going to do is probably stop the card opening um, there. And uh, that'll pretty much wrap up this, uh, this unboxing. That uh, hopefully gives you a glimpse of what you can expect inside of the box. And, uh, of course... If you're checking this video out around the time that the reprint happens, then I hope this is useful for you in determining whether this looks like a game that you want to uh, to invest in. And uh, I'm really waiting with bated breath for the solo and co-op, so I can show you guys how that plays. Because once that drops and it's available, uh, you know, depending on my schedule and things like that, that's something I really want to do right away. And this is going to be a game that I think is going to likely end up in one of my top 10 lists in the future, especially the top 10 solo card games. I can see this dethroning something that's in there. Um, I'm already loving the artwork. I'm, the actual gameplay from what I've heard is really, really well done. So I just, I'm just waiting to see how co uh, solo and co-op pan out first before I make my final decisions on things like that and get a lot of gameplay in, of course. 
and then we can go ahead down that road of seeing whether it's something that uh, you know is going to stand the test of time, which is something we all wonder about the board games we buy these days is whether or not they're going to last long term. So hopefully this helps. Thank you so much for watching and uh, appreciate all the support on the channel. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Let me know, do you have Thunderstone Quest? Are you waiting for it? Uh, do you already own it and you're just kind of waiting for this solo co-op? Is this the first time you've ever heard of this game? Um, did you not know that there was solo and co-op for this one? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to have a chat about it. And thank you guys, as always, for everything that you do. And appreciate the comments, support, and uh, all the subscriptions for the channel. It's amazing. And the solo community here just keeps getting better and better every single day. And I love it. So thank you all. And uh, as always, keep on rolling solo.